Hello everyone. This is the first of a series of videos I'm going to post discussing the solutions of some OSMOPS questions. So if you are one of those who are going to participate or who have participated in the competitions before, I hope you will find this helpful. Let's begin. In this video, we're going to discuss three questions. So let's start with the first one. Right angle triangle PQR has a perimeter of 24 centimeters and an area of 24 square centimeters. Find the length of its longest side. So from here, we know that the triangle is a right triangle. So I will draw the diagram so everyone can understand better. So let's say that these are the vertices PQR and the perimeter is equal to 24 centimeters. And we know that perimeter means the sum of all the sides, okay? And the area is equal to 24 squared centimeters. So if this is a right triangle, then the two shortest side will be here and here. I represent them with A and B and the longest side will be C, okay? And knowing that, to get area of a triangle, so the area is 24, it is equal to half times the base and height. So the base of the uh, triangle is side RQ, which is B there. And the height of the triangle is side PR, which is A. So now I can say that A times B is equal to 48 squared centimeters, right? because half times A times B is 24. So A times B must be 48. So what does that imply? It tells us that A and B are the factors of 48. So now let's list down all the factors of 48. Okay, so the factors of, I will write F of 48, factors of 48. So I have one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, 16, 24, and 48. And you have to keep in mind that we're looking for the longest side. And the sum of the three sides must be 24 centimeters, right? So out of these factors, we have to choose the two shortest side, okay? And if we, let's say, take one and two, one plus two is three then can, be, can the other side be 21? That's what we have to figure out, right? Because the sum has to be 24. Then we have to apply the Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem tells us that the square of the, so I'll put a line here, the square of the shortest side, the sum of the square of the shortest side is equal to the square of the longest side. So we have to test that out. And if you are used to doing Pythagoras um, questions, then you will know that 10 and eight, so it's 10, uh, six squared plus eight squared, six and eight, I mean, is equal to 10 squared, which means the sides are six, eight and 10. And when you add them, it is equal to 24. So that means the, the sides are six, eight and 10, which longest side is 10. So the answer of number one is 10. Okay, now number two. There are 12 red balls, eight blue balls, and six yellow balls in a bag. What is the minimum number of balls Feeble must take out from the bag to ensure he gets at least three balls of the same color? Note that he has only one chance to take the balls and he is not allowed to see the balls that he takes. So for this type of question, we should apply a pigeonhole principle, or I um, often call this worst case scenario. So what does worst case scenario tell us? It is that we are very unlucky because what we want doesn't happen. Now, what we want is that we want to get three balls of the same color. Okay, but every time we take a ball, it is not what we want. So what is the example? We have three different colors, red, blue, and yellow. If only the first three balls we take are red, 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 then we have succeeded. Or if we take blue, 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 or yellow, 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 that means we only need to take three balls, right? And we've got three balls of the same color. 
But we cannot be sure because if you have taken three balls, they can be two red and one blue or uh, red, blue, and yellow, one, one, one. So now we have to think of it as the worst case possible. So let's say the first ball I take is, uh, sorry, it should be red. So the first ball I take is red. And then the next ball I take, I am expecting a red, but I get a blue. And the next time I get, it's a yellow. So it's, it is always a different color. And then the next time I take, it is again a red and then a blue. And then next one is a yellow. So now you see, after getting six balls, I haven't got three of the same color. But so far, I've got two reds, two blue, and two yellow. So that means no matter what color the ball I take next, be it red, blue, or yellow, I will have got three balls of the same color, right? In here, it doesn't matter which color I get. So that means the least ball he should take to be sure is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balls. So the answer is equal to seven, which is option B. Next, question three. Points P, Q, R, and S are located on a straight line in a certain order, not necessarily in that order. It is known that P, Q is 15 units, Q, R is 12 units, R, S is 16 units, S, P is 13 units. What is the pair of points which has the shortest distance? For this type of question, you should draw a diagram. That is the easiest way and the most effective one, okay? Because it will tell you exactly uh, the positions and you should um check whether your guess is correct okay so first i'll start with pq so let's say this is point p and point q and they are 15 units apart and then qr is 12 units now i've got the point q but i don't know where the point r should be so there are two options i can do this first i can put the r over there or I can put the R somewhere here. Okay, and now I will write down that the distance between Q and R is 12 units. Also here, 12 units. So now let's try with the first possibility, RS. RS uh, with the first possibility, I'm choosing the R on the right side of Q, which is here. So RS is 16 units. So again, now there are two possibilities of the RS. I can put S here, somewhere in between P and Q. So RS will be this far, okay? And it says that it is 16 units. And I can put it over there, 16 units apart from R. Now let's check if it makes sense. Okay, with the last statement, SP is 13 units. So this will be S. Now, if S was here, does it make sense that SP is only 13 units? No, right? Because it's 15, 12, and 16 in between. So that means now we know that, okay, this possibility is eliminated. Now, what if S is here? Is it also correct? that SP is 13 units? The answer is not, right? Because the unit here must be three. So, uh, and somewhere here, this is four. So that means 15 minus three minus four, this one is only eight, right? So that means that isn't correct. Now the problem is not only the S, but that starts from the position of R. That means, this R is wrong because that is what we tried with earlier. So that means the correct R should be the R that is inside PQ. So now let's continue again. Now we've got the correct position of PQ and QR. So now we should start with RS. RS is 16 units. So now the 16 units can go there. So this is S. Or the 16 units can go there. So this is S. So now let's try. 
Okay, now I will take the right side first. If this was 16 units, and we know RQ is 12, so this must be four units. Okay, and then it says SP is 13 units. So is P 13 units apart from S? The answer is no, right? That means that is a wrong one. So S shouldn't be there. As should be the left side. So now this is equal to 16 units. And we know that this is three units. So this will leave SP as 13 units. So now it fits the description, right? Now uh, that is the correct position of all the points. So now we can say that the shortest distance is three units, and that is P or. All right. So that's the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.